And now it's time for the story of Boy and a Jaguar. This is a book written by Alan Rabinowitz, and the illustrations are done by Katia Chen. It's a great story, and I know you'll enjoy it. I'm standing in the great cat house at the Bronx Zoo. Why is this jaguar kept in a bare room, I wonder? I lean toward my favorite animal and I whisper to her. What are you doing, my father asks. I try to explain, but at that moment, my mouth freezes, just as I knew it would. You see, if I try to push words out, my head and body shake uncontrollably. The teachers at my school put me in a class for disturbed children, as they call it. He's not disturbed, my parents say. We're sorry, the teachers answer. But whenever he tries to speak, he disrupts the class. The teachers think I'm broken. Am I? But I can do two things well without having problems. One is to sing. Only I can't sing very well. The other is I have the ability to talk to animals. Every day I come home from class and go straight to the closet to my room. I bring out my pets. They are a hamster, a gerbil, a green turtle, a chameleon, and a garter snake. I close the door and I talk to them. And there are no problems. I tell them my dreams. I tell them that I want to be able to do things like everybody else and speak like everybody else. I know that my pets listen and I know that they understand. You see, animals can't get the words out just like I can't get the words out. So sometimes people ignore or misunderstand or hurt these animals just the same way people ignore or misunderstand or hurt me. So at that moment, I make a promise to my pets. I promise that if I can ever find my voice, that I'll be their voice and that I'll keep them from harm. My parents try everything to help me. They go to doctor after doctor. They try every kind of medicine. They even try hypnosis, but nothing works. But my father, he knows the one thing that does work. He takes me to the great cat house at the Bronx Zoo. I go straight to the cage with the lone jaguar. I lean over the railing and I put my face against the bars. I whisper my promise to her fluently. I get through school by learning some tricks to deal with my problem. You see, I learn when not to speak. I learn when to avoid situations and I learn when to just not be around people. When, my, when I enter college, my parents enroll me in an experimental program. There I'm told that I will always have this issue and that it will always be a part of me. But my teacher tells me that if I work hard, I can become completely fluent. I think about how my mouth moves and air flows. And for the first time in years, I can speak and it seems smooth. I can speak, sure, but nothing has changed on the inside. You see, I still feel broken. I even go to the Great Smoky Mountains to study black bears. Alone in the forest with the animals, that's where I feel the most at home. Later on, I go down to Central America and go down south to Belize, and I become the very first person to close-up study Jaguars. The jungle? Well, when I'm down there, it makes me feel more alive than I've ever felt. I, I learn how to follow and capture jaguars for study before I release them back into the wild. Now I'm happy. But as fast as I catch jaguars and gather information to help them, hunters are killing them. You see, they fear the animals and they even prize their bodies as trophies. I need to get some more areas protected for the jaguars. I want to keep the promise that I made to the pets in my closet. Now I have my voice to speak for all the animals. In the capital city of Belize, in the office of the prime minister, the head of the whole country, I am given 15 minutes to make my case. That's it. Just 15 minutes. I cannot have my issue that I have to deal with distract from my message. I have to convince one of the poorest countries in Central America that has no protected areas in the entire country 
that it has to save the Jaguar. Later that day, after my 15-minute presentation, the Prime Minister votes to set up the world's first and only Jaguar preserve. I did it. Back in the jungle, I know that all the jaguars in the study, I know them all from their tracks. But one day I come across a completely new track. It's the biggest male jaguar tracks I've ever seen. I follow the prints for hours. Now, I didn't want to be caught in the jungle at night, not without a flashlight. So I turn around and I go back to camp. And then I felt like something was behind me. And then I saw it right behind me was the jaguar. Instead of me following him, he must have been following me. I know at this point I should feel frightened, but I squat down. I look into the jaguar's eyes, just as I had with a sad old female jaguar at the Bronx Zoo in New York. But this animal isn't sad. In this animal's eyes are strength, power, and sureness of purpose. We are both whole, and we are both at home. I lean towards him a little, the way I did on that day at the Bronx Zoo so many years before. And I whispered, you know what I said? Two words. Thank you. And that's the story called A Boy and a Jaguar, one of my favorite books to share. Now I have a question for you. Did you figure out what the disability that the boy had? We know that he had problems with speaking, uh, and we know it was something having to do with speech. The answer is, he was a stutterer. So despite his stuttering, he was able to go to the head of that country, Belize, and he was able to convince them, even though they didn't have a lot of money, to create a jaguar preserve. He was able to realize who he truly was on the inside, and that his disability didn't stop him from doing the great things that he was to do. I hope you enjoyed this story, a boy and a jaguar. And I hope you enjoyed our RFES bedtime story. Be sure to tune in tomorrow night on the RFES YouTube channel for another edition of the RFES bedtime story. And I hope you have a good night's sleep.